and good afternoon. Uh, thank you for all joining uh, and our, our, with our wonderful panel. I'm Celeste Grady. I am in charge of strategic technology partnerships here at Google, uh, and I'm honored to be with this panelist. So first, we have Andrew Flev, who is the CEO and co-founder of Reich, a SaaS-based work management platform that helps teams plan, manage, and complete work at scale. So can you give us a little bit more about how you got into space and why you're excited about this? The way I got into space in the, uh, in the first place, I was running my previous company uh, and saw a lot of inefficiencies and I want to make sure we move as fast as possible. Um, and what gets me excited is I see um, huge momentum right now in the market in the way companies are changing uh, the way they work. Um, and it's visible to some degree in the valley, uh, but we also talk to customers worldwide and it's uh, you'd be amazed how much of that is uh, kind of driving um, a lot of things around the world. Like in Germany, uh, the industry 4.0 is the big thing. In Japan, uh, they're talking at, ev at every level from government to companies about the new way to work. So I think uh, we live in a very, very interesting time where uh, there, we might not notice it because it's incremental every day, but there's a huge change going in the workplace in the, in the way the businesses are run. And I'd also like to introduce you to Margot Visitation, who is a Vice President Principal Analyst at Forrester, helping enterprise architecture pro professionals shift their focus from technology standardization and cost reduction to true customer-driven technology capabilities. Margot, talk to us a little bit of how you got into this. Thank you. Um, well, at Forrester, we look at how organizations can serve customer-obsessed, that can become customer-obsessed companies. And in order to become a customer-obsessed company, you really have to be able to have better streams of communication and more transparent ways of working. And a couple of years ago, my background's project management. I've worked for Forrester for about 18 years and was always covering project management for software technology and business projects. And what I saw evolving over the last couple of years is that as information workers are working, being pushed to work faster and faster, they're using different types of technologies. The average information worker goes through eight or nine different applications a day just to get their job done. And they're all being tasked with managing projects, but most of these information workers are not formal project managers. And the tools that were on the market at the time just didn't serve their purposes. It was all focused on the, the plan and not on the way that people work. And we saw tools like Reich and other uh, products coming onto the market that were really focused on the human aspects of working more than the scheduled aspects of working. And I found that really exciting. Very exciting. And I'll introduce you also to Don Harris, who's the head of support for Pluralsight, an enterprise technology learning platform that delivers a unified end-to-end -end learning experience for businesses around the globe. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I handle the, all of the support for Pluralsight, internal and external. So part of my job role is really hap handling the operational excellence, which is technical support, working with the engineering teams, working with the product teams, um, working with marketing. Uh, we also handle technical documentation, and then we also support our sales team and direct customers. So our team is consistently trying to interface with a lot of these other stakeholders across the business, and that's where we kind of get it into looking at tooling to really help bring these tools together, bring that communication together, and just make it an easier experience for all the stakeholders involved, which has been a really valuable experience and just gets me more excited as technology is starting to evolve to make that collaboration easier. Wonderful. So I'm gonna ask the, a few questions and go ahead and just come in when you'd like to, but how do you think the modern workplace has really changed in the past few years? Andrew, do you wanna start off with that? Sure. Um, one thing that for me is, is, is fundamental is, is the pace. Right, the, the velocity. So I started in software engineering myself. I remember the beginning of my career, uh, we tried to plan very, very big projects um, that would take us a year, two years, sometimes three years. I still remember gun charts on the walls. Um, 
And then I was lucky to get early exposure to Agile technologies, uh, year 2000, if any of you remember extreme programming, um, kind of that, 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 that age, uh, kind of Agile manifesto was just signed. And I was really, really, really excited. I saw huge potential. And, and first I saw it in the software industry, but then I also uh, thought, wow, this, this has applicability across so many different areas. Um, and, and it became true. Well, I've seen the same transformation going through marketing, which moved from very, very strategic kind of annual campaigns, um, TV spend, um, to, to something that's multi-channel, like almost real-time, micro-targeting, a lot of data, a lot of micro programs. So I've seen the velocity really accelerate. And, and part of that is this whole notion of digital transformation, which is kind of a buzzword, right? But it does have... Uh, it's buzzword because it means so many different things, but it's not buzzword in the sense that it's really happening. So as, as more and more, for more and more companies, digital work becomes the centerpiece of their competitiveness. Um, the benefit of that is that it's, it can move very fast and it can scale very fast. And I think that pace, that agility um, is, is one of the fundamental changes that, that drive a lot of kind of behaviors and, and tools. And Margo, your thoughts? There's a couple of different areas. Uh, number one, demographics, okay? The workplace is, you know, my generation, we're aging out, okay? And then the people that are coming into the workplace today are used to consuming technology and working in different ways. It's no longer cube farms and nine to five. It is working where you want, when you want. It's a gig economy, so you're now working with different people than, than just people in your department. So you're working with a broader network of people. And I think that work, that demographic change has really accelerated everything that you just mentioned about the digital aspects, because it's now not something that, we don't do digital. Our lives are becoming digital. You don't go to the store to go buy anything anymore. You go on Amazon and you buy something. And you want Amazon to tell you what else you need to buy because you didn't think about it. So what are the three things your friends bought? Oh, I think I need one of those. All of those are what changes the workspace. It's more access to more information with lower barriers. And that makes people want to work faster. That makes people want to be more effective. And what we see now is that the, um, the carrot for an employee today is very different. Um, you know, when we, asked, when we asked employees 10 years ago, 15 years ago, even as, uh, I would say even as recently as five years ago, financial was really the primary indication for employee satisfaction. You really wanted to work to make the money. What we're seeing today is that employees want to be effective and they want to be productive. And it's now a challenge for the workplace and employers to be able to outfit their employees with the right tools, environments, and processes to be productive because people want to feel that sense of accomplishment at the end of the day. You have anything? No. Yeah. yeah, and just to add on to that, I mean, both of those factors are very true. It's just about the speed of which we can get work done. Uh, the other piece is the software that we're using is incorporation collaboration elements, but actually having a software that starts bringing those collaboration elements together to a cohesive solution is something that I've seen started to develop over the last couple of years that really takes collaboration to another element, uh, another level. I'm going to go on to the point you said a little bit earlier, where kind of like the the, the generation thing. When we heard when we hear the words digital native, a lot of like generation changes in the workforce. What do you actually see as how it's impacting technology in the enterprise today? Can you elaborate on that thought a little? Absolutely, I think that it has to be consumer grade. You know, when you have, when you are using the applications that you use on your phone to help you do anything from ordering food to, you know, buying shoes or which is my, my passion, but, <laughs> or, or, you know, anything that you need to, the, that you want to do in your personal life, that consumer grade, uh, user friendliness, it has to extend into the workplace now. You know, the, the, it used to be that applications that you use to do your day job had to be complex, they had to be difficult to use, and you couldn't get the right information you needed out of that application at the, at the time that you needed it. And I think that digital native is now making the demands that collaboration has to be easy. I have to be able, it has to be fast, and I don't want to spend the majority of my time looking for something. I need it immediately. 
Those are, um, I would absolutely agree with, with all those points. Um, one, one other thing that I've, I've, I've noticed um, is y uh, any of you who kind of observe teen teenagers know how much they're, they're texting, right, and how that <laughs> becomes uh, one of their dominant channels of communication. And we see some of that in the workspace as well where people um, are getting better with um, asynchronous collaboration. So instead of it all just be about meetings, um, they're getting more comfortable to share information online with each other and kind of to move in this quick micro iteration instead of saying, hey, let's schedule a meeting and spend an hour in something, um, kind of then by chunk uh, progress uh, on, on the way. And then another thing which is more cultural, um, I think, uh, and, and a little bit generational, I guess, because it's cultural, um, People find it easier, again, to proactively share information, right? Some people, you got to teach them to do that. And it's not like feature, teaching them the features. It's more culturally, why would I do that, right? Versus uh, some people who are digital natives, they're used to proactively share their personal lives. And so it's a little bit easier for them to proactively kind of share work information, which in turn makes it easier for others to find and to collaborate. That's a very good point. Don, do you have anything to add to that? No. Yeah, okay. So how do you think the nature of collaboration in general has changed? I think that the, the nature of collaboration is, is in the, the building on your point of being more comfortable in sharing information. And I think that what we're seeing is the cross-functional nature of organizations is really changing. You're not working in siloed departments anymore. It's not unusual to be working with uh, a, a number of different uh, groups and, and to be able to bring together a product or a service. So it's not unusual for development to be working with marketing or working with legal to make sure that a product is, is uh, meeting all regulatory requirements. So the nature of that forces collaboration. And I also think the technology now is at the point where you now have the uh, ability to collaborate in a way that gives you more purpose. Collaboration tools have been around for a long time. Every company is invested in the flavor of the month, but they've never really taken off before because they were, collab they were passive collaboration. Put it out there, put your files in there, but you still had to be working through email to be able to get your job done. And that creates you know, fractures in the way that you work with somebody else. So what we're seeing now is that, especially when you're looking at something like G Suite, you've got G Suite's giving you the, the, the wheels and the engine to collaborate seamlessly. But what's different today in leveraging tools like Rike um, and the collaborative work management tools is they're giving you the steering wheel to bring it together. So you have a container where everybody sees the work in the context of the work and they can work together more effectively. That I think is what really drives greater productivity. I really like that analogy, the steering wheel. So, so in terms of um, change in collaboration, I see three, three main things. One is um, this uh, concept that I, I have of hidden work. So because right now it's so, so easy to kind of text each other and send messages, um, it's, so, it's also so easy to create work for others. And then we have to report on our work to our bosses and like, what have you been doing the last week? And you're like, eh, I don't know, I've been working like 10 hours a day and it's still very, very hard to, to report. So I think that that concept of hidden work um, is, is really creating a lot of kind of stress and overwork and, and we gotta find a good way to uncover it. Like I, again, sometimes I look at their messaging as like hot potato, like it, now it's your problem. I, I texted you, so now, now you go, go take care of it. Oh, that that's never happens. That's the, that's, the, that's the immediacy of it, so that you can actually send it to them right away and you don't have to wait for them to get back to their desk to look at their email. They can see it right away and you can respond to it right away. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so um, that, that's one. Their other thing is, um, when, um, as Margaret said, their work becomes increasingly collaborative, and Don said, said that as well, uh, but it also creates a lot of frustrations when people have to wait for others. Um, so, and and we, we, we do every year a big service with uh, usually thousands of respondents, and uh, us, uh, one, one of the surveys we asked about the stressors at work, um, and one of the biggest one is uh, when people have to wait for others to either get the input into their work or to push the work forward. So um, as much as you can automate uh, that, that workflow, um, you can kind of remove a lot of frustrations and also push it faster. Um, 
And then last but not least, um, I think automation is a very, very, very hot hot topic here um, to today, um, both on the vendor side and kind of kind of in general. I'm sure a lot of the consultants downstairs kind of preach that. I've seen also seen UiPath here, which you know has a lot of buzz around um, uh, robotic process automation. So automation uh, is becoming a big topic, and we see it in reality. Google invests a lot in AI, mm -hmm. but interestingly, it also uh, lets people kind of shine in the areas where they're most powerful, which is creativity, empathy, strategy. So I think that's that's the other um, thing that drives that collaboration because the human part of the work becomes more and more important versus their kind of robotic parts slowly gets more and more more automated. Make it more efficient. Yeah. Yes, Tom? Yeah, and just to add on the automation, a lot of the challenges of automation is the data that you're working off of. So as we're collaborating more and pulling different systems together to try to collaborate, all of a sudden if you can have a collaborative work management system you know, that ties that together, you just get a much more rich data set to be able to understand where to focus on uh, to automate. That's a good point. But what happens is because it's sticky, people like to use it because the tool works for them, you get richer data and that makes your reporting more effective and then that makes your boss happy and then <laughs> that's what able, you happy know, boss, enables happy you, employee. that's right, that's what enables you to drive it further in the organization. So how many applications does the average worker tend to use to do their job and what does that mean for the productivity, for the stress and just overall satisfaction? As I said before, average is about eight or nine applications that you use throughout the course of the day to do your day job. Every time you look away from the screen that you're working on, you lose three minutes of productivity a day. So if you take the three minutes of productivity you lose every time an email comes in or every time you look away from your screen, you know, that adds up pretty quickly. Then you add to that meetings that you're in where the first 45 minutes of the meetings is spent in review and only the last 15 minutes are spent making a decision. You've just lost more productivity. When you boil it down at the end of the day, you're lucky if 20% of your time is spent actually doing your day job. No, it, it is a big challenge. I, I run a company that has almost 700 employees, and so um, we have a pretty big um, analytics team that connects different systems together and different data together, and, and it's still a never-ending battle. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's, it, it, is, it, it can be a huge uh, enabler, or it can also, it can also be uh, a big, big drag um, on, on your business. And I don't know if any of you saw this uh, interesting cha uh, charts. Um, I, I saw one for marketing technology landscape, which had 5,000 micro logos. It's uh, almost like an art, you know, you're trying to figure out whose logo that is. Uh, like it's, it's a huge landscape. And it's, it's interesting where every single one of those tools promises you an incremental improvement. But in reality, unless you connect them with, through either APIs and data or workflows, uh, ultimately, it's actually going to be a drag um, on, on your business because, again, you're man you, you have to manage all of that and somebody has to actually move the, the, the pieces together. Um, and for managers, it's additional challenge because now you have to manage the work that sort of lives in multiple systems and, again, report on the work that lives in multiple systems. So I personally both love the proliferation of tools because each one of them is kind of an expert in their micro areas. Uh, but it's also very important to connect them. Uh, one positive trend that I'm seeing is there are players out there like Azuqua, Workata, on the simpler and it's um, Zapier that now allow uh, even business users to connect different systems and we see it in our customers as well. So Airbnb is a great customer. They, uh, they connected us with G Suite, with Salesforce using Azuqua and it was done by a business user. He's not within the IT, and so, which makes me think that IT could make it even even more powerful. So those are kind of, if you have micro tools, then you should also have micro automations. It shouldn't be two year IT project to stitch those systems together. You should train and enable your business users uh, to be able to do that by themselves. Uh, and part of the reason why, um, and again, Airbnb is a great example, is because a lot of those business processes evolve as companies scale their digital operations, kind of every quarter there's little improvement. 
and, and also better understanding. They might start at a certain point and then two quarters in, they get additional data. They're like, oh, we can actually optimize this process. So if you enable your business users to self-provision some of that stuff and also self-automate uh, some of those tools, I think you can unlock um, a big, big, big potential um, acro across your organization. I know from a Pluralsight supports perspective, we use uh, over a dozen tools on or softwares on a daily basis. Uh, and the other thing, just to kind of reinforce but wasn't touched on, is even just the training for those tools. Because if your employees don't have the training or if they're just not focused on one of those aspects, then the information or what's supposed to be done through that tool drops off, which is a huge concern when you when you're a manager trying to make sure that everything is getting done. So that's another tax that happens by having additional software and tools. So I'll start off, I'll ask you of this, Margot, because I'm sure that um, Andrew will have, so we all know collaborations now, table stakes. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot, we're seeing a lot in the marketplace. How do you do it well and how does G Suite fit into the picture? Well, I think that uh, you do it well by making it simple. I think if you add too much restriction to a process, you overcomplicate it, going back to the data and the training piece that, that, you, that you mentioned before. Um, I also think, as I said, I think G Suite gives you the tires, gives you the engine. Um, collaborative work management tools give you the steering wheel to bring it all together so that you see the context. And I think the, the key word to keep in mind is context. Otherwise, it's noise. So you have to think about how you curate the information when you're setting up, and, and that's where collaborative work management comes in, because G Suite is so seamless and so easy to use. You, you, you know, you need to keep the right guideline, the right guidelines and guardrails in place, so that people aren't over uh, overwhelmed by noise. And collaborative work management tools, what they do is they bring the container that creates the context. So you know that if you have something allocated to you that you have to review a document or, or, a, um, you know, or a presentation, that it's in the context of a particular set of activities or a project or even a process. And you know that, you know the context then of the communication that you need to be delivering. Yeah, how do you do it well? For me, it's just follow a process follow a process or a workflow, and as a manager or employee, be able to understand where it is or get a status update and understand how much it's happening. You know, having that reporting to the execution through a consolidated system, not to say that everything has to be done through one system, but there should be a system that's trying to tie that together and then challenge yourself. The things that you're actually reaching out to another software or information that you're gathering is that something you can automate and pull into that system just so you don't have to do that jump or as many jumps to be able to execute against that task? Anything to add to that? And how can collaborative work management tools improve productivity across teams? So give me an idea of some of the benefits. We've talked a lot about this, but more specifically in terms of engagement and employee engagement and execution. I have a brief one, but I know you have a lot to say. <laughs> um, uh, I, I can tell you an insurance company that, that is um, a client of ours uh, invested in collaborative work management. And prior to doing that, they looked at, they did some surveying of their organization. And what they found is that their, uh, their employees spent 33% of their week looking for information in email. Not reading it, not writing it, just looking for information. They also found that um, you know, they were holding uh, you know, multiple meetings a week where decisions were not necessarily being made. It was more review than action decisions. Um, and what they did is by putting in collaborative work management in place, they were able to reduce email time by over a third. Okay, and that meant all types of email usage, not just looking for things. Um, it also helped them reduce their number of meetings by half and reduced their meeting times from an hour to 30 minutes. That also reduced their executive meeting time because they could collaborate via the tool that they were using and come and make decisions without having to pull everybody away from the work that they were doing. So um, for me, there are several key benefits. One is um, scalability. So I, I think all the, I, I sort of conceptually look at all their successful digital companies and 
in my opinion, what they do is kind of split in two phases. First is that creative chaos. And in reality, uh, you, in, in that case, you know, you could use our system, somebody else's system, or no system at all. It's all about test and experimentation, like brilliant ideas, brainstorming. You do have to have the foundational layer, which would be G Suite, because you gotta like manage, create documents, uh, spreadsheets, kind of build models, iterate. So, and then once you figure it out, the beauty of their digital is that now you gotta scale it, right? And so Airbnb, great example, they were launching a new product called uh, Airbnb Experiences, their second product. At that time it was only product number two. Um, and they used um, Gmail and Google Sheets to, to do it and it worked quite well uh, when they created the first 20. But when you need to orchestrate the work of 15 different teams, uh, you know, now you need to go global over 50 different cities, you gotta have a scalable playbook. And once you have that playbook, you need to scale it. And so that's, that's one benefit where you need to scale something and sort of guarantee predictability, guarantee quality, uh, make sure you can plug in the new person or junior person and they'll still be able to kind of work well. And if needed, they can plug their right expert. So, the scalability is one. A second uh, related to that is just visibility. The whole reason I um, sort of created our tool in the first place is um, a decade ago, and I kind of, uh, I don't know if I'm getting old. So a decade ago, <laughs> it was actually quite easy to look at any single project. And again, you can use different tools to plan it. But once you start managing across them, um, there was nothing to really help you out. So you would wake up in the morning and pull up like 20 different Microsoft project files or 20 different spreadsheets, which is not, not really fun. So that uh, visibility across different work um, is very, very important when you try to run a well-oiled a well machine and kind of high performance organization as a whole, not just high performance unit, but high performance organization, which is very, very different. It's like a sports team. If you have a collection of stars, it doesn't yet make it a good good team. You, you, you gotta have a well-oiled, place and playbooks and you need them to work well together. So that uh, visibility I think is key, being able to see what's going on in almost real time, um, being able to uh, plug in when needed and um, set aside when needed um, is really, really, really helpful. Um, and I've seen that work across many, many, many customers. Anything to add to that, Don? Yeah, I agree to both Margo and Andrew. And the other piece is I feel I live in the controlled chaos space quite a bit. <laughs> um, and the first question whenever you're trying to collaborate out of that controlled chaos is, how many times are you seeing it? How many times is this happening? How many times is this coming up? Being able to get it, anything that you're doing into a system to start getting some measurement, some tangible measurement rather than the subjective estimate is going to speak much more um, loudly to other stakeholders across the organization to be able to then get the resource, resources or getting the mind share to be able to get, you know, reiterate on the solution of what's happening or to be able to address what needs to be addressed. So that's one area where collaborative work management as well falls in is it allows my team and myself to be able to measure some of that controlled chaos uh, quicker um, and then figure out what to go, what to do from there. So, yeah. um, so no, you can't. <laughs> no, I, I think this is very, very, very important. I, I saw that in agile development where a lot of people misunderstood it and thought that Agile is kind of the same as Cowboy, which is, it's actually is the opposite, right? So at the end of each sprint, you do a retrospective and you basically become better every single time you, you execute. And so that's what you get when you have a system with visibility in place. Every single time you do something, you can get a little bit better. Think of it like, you know, faster, stronger, better. So. And, and, and this is very important that goes back to this concept of operational excellence. Can we not just put the playbooks in place, but can we improve those play, playbooks every single time we, we do them? And, and the other thing that it um, lets you see is it allows you to better see bottlenecks in your business, in your organization. Um, one very, very simple observation, there always is bottleneck. That's the definition of it, right? There's always the slowest part. And so if you wanna scale something, uh, it's an art and a science of being able to find that bottleneck and improve. And again, as a founder of a company who uh, grows exponentially, um, I kind of live in that 
my, myself. Um, I'm, I'm being gold on very, very fast growth. And part of my job is find the different bottlenecks in the organization proactively before they kind of uh, clog down the whole system and, and be, be, be able to kind of do incremental improvements there to scale. So to follow on with that, what, what where do you say is the ideal like uh, workflow to really look for G Suite and collaborative management to really hone in on? So um, for G Suite, uh, I'd say, uh, G Suite is just going to be there at, at um, every single one. Like it's the foundational block. Um, you know, we, you know, you, you got to have your jeans and your shirt, and you. I hope so. G Suite, right? <laughs> so um, no, I, th I think it's it's important. You got to be able to message. You got to be able to create documents. Those are messaging and documents are two important modalities in collaboration, um, and for me, they're. Work is the third very important modality. Um, you message uh, everybody or somebody uh, and you send them documents because you're working on something together. So being able to track that work, whatever it is, is it a task, is it a project, is it a program, is it a workflow, um, it's, it's always important. Now, going back to your original question, you asked which workflows. Mm -hmm. um, I personally look at the ones that are not yet kind of a software category. So for example, there is a software category for uh, for, for, for say, um, engineering management, right? And there would be Atlassian, for example, uh, is the biggest vendor, but there, there are many, many others. And so if you already have that in place, wonderful, right? But then there are some areas like marketing where you have big headcount, huge budgets, big dependency of the business on the success of that team, and they would have no system in place. And you'll be like, ha, ha. How can it be, right? So, so those are the uh, kind of your aha moments where you're like, we got to put something in place if we want to scale, if we want to kind of have controlled growth. Yeah. For for me, you know, when you say where do you start, uh, I I'll take a counter. I think at what Andrew said was spot on. But if you're new to this. Just take something that doesn't have a clear owner or something that's going to be very dynamic right out of the gates. Because that flexibility, just to be able to figure out what doesn't work and what starts to work and gets the, you know, makes that process or workflow just a little bit incrementally better, um, is going to speed up that timeline of it not having a system at all. Because then you're just not getting that data out. You might be not executing against that. Um, so that what's where I would even start. And then once you start getting comfortable or understanding even the capabilities of the collaborative work management system, then you can even take it to broader organizations that's going to amplify the effect of what's happening just because of the amount of collaboration that's happening within those organizations. The core here is work. Everybody works. and. From, and everybody creates some sort of output from their work. Even if you are an architect or you are a, you know, you are working construction or you are a builder, information has to be shared. And the elements of G Suite allow you to share that information. And then collaborative work management, it's great if you have a process, but it's okay if you don't have a process. And, but you, what you want to do is be able to bring a level of transparency and visibility. G Suite's all about the creation, and then collaborative work management is about understanding the context of the work. And when you bring the two together, it's really all about transparency and visibility. I think the thing that's very important for organizations when they get started is think about, we, we do this stuff every day. Even if the process is broken, it's still a process. But if you raise up the level of transparency and, and, and give everybody a common place to go to see that information, you're already fixing the process. Yeah. So I think it's really important not to overthink it. Recognize that, okay, we've got, we, we've got the work that we have to do. We have the outcomes that we need to achieve. Here's the content we need to see to help us get there. Now let's put the right context around the information. That's interesting. So, Don. It's perfect since I'm at Google and I'm asking this question. How is actually Pluralsight using G Suite? Yeah, Pluralsight is using G Suite for you know Gmail and Google Docs and everything's really just fundamentally placed in G Suite. Um, and then because of the visibility it allows. 
And then you have some other teams that are starting to build in these integrations that we mentioned. Um, just so we're either pulling data out of G Suite into other applications so it doesn't have to be done manually or referred to, or pulling information from other systems uh, into G Suite, again, just so there's that extra step or the switch of application that doesn't need to happen. And, and that's primarily where we're looking at G Suite, again, is a lot of the functional pieces that G Suite does really, really well because collaboration is just a native component um, of the applications it supports is really where we're using G Suite. And then as a learning company, why is, it, why is continuous learning so critical for digital workers? Yeah, so as Andrew mentioned, and actually we've all mentioned, the rate of, the rate of change is happening, in, or, yeah, the rate of change is just increasing. So with that rate of change, you have to stay up to date on what changes are being had and what options are available for you. Otherwise, you're either going to lose the knowledge that you have at any point in time if you're not consistently learning to be able to stay up with the functionality of the tools that you're using. Um, otherwise, you're missing opportunities because these companies, whether it be your own, because you are using cloud services and your, um, your deployment cycle is pretty rapid, or even the software providers that your company is using, is evolving to the needs of the customer. Uh, and that is just going to continue to increase. So just being able to stay up to date with all of those changes and the tools you need to even understand what those changes are, are critical. Anything to add to that? Um, I would uh, echo and just uh, maybe continue their topic that I started earlier. Um, I think we, right now their job landscape is changing very, very rapidly. Uh, so we're yet, uh, some, some of their functions will go through very rapid change. So think of it as like Uber, you know, changing the taxi landscape pretty quickly, or almost overnight if you just look at the over, kind of grand scheme of things. So there are some jobs uh, that might be changed as quickly. You know, Google is releasing different AI protocols for like contact center and things, stuff like that. So uh, there is a chance that everything will be as, as it was yesterday and there is a chance that it'll change quickly. I, I do think their automation in general is extremely beneficial. So think about it, uh, for example, as from the design perspective. Their, what design was 30 years ago is very, very different from today. The work that mostly been done by designers 30 years ago is completely automated today. And at the same time, we have more designers than ever, and it's very hip and interesting and creative job. So I think uh, a lot of the professions will go through the same, and I think there will always be uh, ever-increasing uh, amount of interest in work for people, but only for those who can change with times, right? And that, that's where continuous learning is important. And those who are enabled to change these times, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, going to be on their not so pleasant side of this. Yeah, and as you were kind of mentioning, I think the digital worker, I think everybody has a different context in mind when they say digital worker. And really, as we're continuing down this path, there's a lot more roles that are going to be a digital worker than we can even probably think of right now. So even challenge the concept of, you know, what is a digital worker because, you know, I think naturally we'll think of engineering or even product, but it's really stemming into sales is very software based and, you know, working together and that information that they're gathering through the sales cycle needs to feed back into products and engineering teams and marketing teams. Um, so just kind of increasing even, you know, that concept of a digital worker into, you know, Everyone's those areas, worker. yeah, those areas is, is a needed change uh, or philosophy switch for some of those job roles. That's a very good point. Um, I'd like to open it out to the audience if there's any questions for our panel. Mm -hmm.